Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Burning Peak, and in today's video, I'll be playing in a tank that I have been quite excited to mess around with is the Action 10, the Centurion Action 10. I think that Centurions look really nice, personally. I've always loved the design, and the Action 10 is a vehicle that has never existed in World of Tanks Blitz, but I've always wanted to try out on PC. So in today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I've got a rather weird loadout, and people might cringe at it, but at the end of the day, it's my loadout, so uh, deal with it. We have an improved hardening, we have a rammer, and vents. Now, I was tempted to do V-stabs, but I think this vehicle's on-move is good enough to get the job done. Obviously, I want a rammer to get out as much DPM as possible. So, you might be asking, why am I running hardening? You know, that's the big question. Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, because it gives you more HP. 2,200 hit points is going to be able to allow me to brawl other mediums and usually win even if I do get bled out a little bit. But that's not the major thing. The major reason I want improved hardening is because of the suspension repair speed and suspension suspension durability. These are huge because of the fact that the Centurion has massive track wheels and no matter really what you do when you're poking you're probably going to have a very high chance of being tracked and if that's the case I'd much rather have more durable and faster repairing suspension rather than not. And that's why I am running improved hardening on the tank. So it's really just for the repair speed, but I also get a little bit of extra HP, which is pretty nice. So uh, yeah, we're going to see how the vehicle does. By the way, over 4,000 damage per minute on my uh, build, which is kind of crazy. We can see here, this is the armor of the tank. Not very good. Upper plate's about 230 to 210. Lower plate's about 100. And while the turret cheek does have some spots which are weak, it also has some spots which are very, very strong, as we can see. Uh, using 10 degrees of gun depression, it's not great though. I mean, you can very easily pen the lower part here, 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 and while the, uh, you know, the roof is very hard to pen, uh, let's be honest, you're not really going to struggle that much to cut through the Centurion Action 10. So it is going to be a rather peculiar tank to drive. Um, but I'm interested to see how good the gun is on this vehicle, because that's the major strength, I would think. It has a hash firing gun, obviously, which is really nice. The HE is, uh, quite dangerous. Let's take a look at what we got going. So, 105 millimeters of pen, 480 high explosive damage. Then we have AP with 270 mils of standard pen, and heat with 330 mils of pen. That's all really, really nice. The tank is also fairly fast, and the heat has pretty good shell velocity. Not as good as the standard, but still, pretty good. So... When you add all these things together, uh, honestly, the tank seems to be pretty dang capable. And I just think it looks amazing. I have to say, personally, this is one of the nicest looking tanks in the game. Alright, so we are obviously going to head in here. We're chilling at 50 right now. And uh, I'm going to try and get sort of where our TVP is. We see the enemy pat. We also got the enemy TVP spotted. Unfortunately, we are not able to hit that shot, but not too big of a deal. We actually spotted that TVP. One thing that's always great about these Centurions is the amazing view range they feature. This tank features very, very good view range. So we see the Fosh, we see a lot, and we do get shot at. Uh, there you go. Low roll, but we still do end up penetrating the enemy Char, which is obviously pretty nice. Okay. Well, we'll see if I can get another shell into the Char at some point here. We're going to reload again. We do have a very, very fast reload, so we got to be a little careful about that. There you go. Char gets spotted again. Track hit. Well, not that big of a deal. As I said, I am running improved targeting, which gives us that ability to not actually have to worry about our track repairs at all. So, uh, let's see. That's Char. I bet you that Char will poke again at some point. But we have the uh, Fosh crossing. There you go. Nice 396 shell into the enemy Fosh. Pretty good stuff. We also got the uh, T-54D and the 430. Uh, let's see if that 430 tries to cross. Oh, I did not see the... Uh, I don't even know how that patent poked us without being spotted. That makes very little sense if you want my opinion, but uh, what do I know, right? Uh, we got a tracking shot into the T-54D. We don't actually end up penning him, which is a little disappointing, but a tracking shot is not awful. Okay. Oh, we got the TVP detected again. I wonder if we can move up here. I'm going to try it. We're going to see if I can. It's a little sussler, but if we can get away with it, it'll be huge. So let's go over here, and beautiful. Look at that. Okay, well, we've managed to get to the side of the patent over here. We don't hit the patent, but just the fact that we're in this spot is obviously really, really good. 
as it stops the enemy team from really being able to do anything. There you go, nice 430 damaging shell into the M48 Patton. Dude is screwed. I mean, we basically just got him killed there immediately. Um, let's see, the 430's on the side, and... Aw, oh, really? That was sad. Is the 430 actually going to cross this? He is. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's load heat. Not a bad idea, I would say. Um, I doubt the 430 is going to poke us. Let's see, is that tortoise here? He is. And he does pen us, but at least we get a shell back into the tortoise in return, which is always nice. Okay. Tortoise is getting bled a bit. I mean, we still have 1400 health because, as I said, we have a, a lot of HP with our current loadout, which is very, very nice, actually. Um, we can see that the TNH is on the side, not able to hit him, um, but maybe if he pulls up a bit we can. No, unfortunate. Very close, but not able to get it out. Okay, well, we got the 430. Oh, we got the Char right there, and nope, not able to hit the shot on the enemy Char. Not that big of a deal, though. Huh. Well, we wait. We patiently wait for the enemy. Let's see, we got the TVP. Got the 430. Let's see, is that tortoise still there? No, he is not. Okay, well, let's get to the uh, side of the 430. Wow, what an awful roll. Thankfully, he misses the shell on us. And uh, if we just speed behind him here. There you go. Easy clear. Okay. Pretty good stuff so far. Uh, we reload. We aim it on the uh, Titan 54D, possibly. I'm going to try and make my way... Well, we'll see. Might just try and fight the Titan. But I am worried that the tortoise is also going to be here, which he is... Huh. Okay. Well, maybe we can get into a side scrape or something like that and try and shoot the tortoise. There you go. Oh, that shell misses. Okay, game. That made literally zero sense. Uh, let's aim it on the tortoise again. There you go. We got that one out at least. Not too bad. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can get any more out into the enemy tortoise. He misses. We get another shell out. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, let's see if we can get another shot. I don't know what to say. Like, the tortoise is getting more bounces than it should, if you want my opinion. Uh, I'm just going to wait for our team. There you go. Tortoise gets shot again by an HE from our artillery, which is pretty good. I'm just going to wait. Eventually, the uh, tortoise will die. Our TVP doesn't want to poke. Let's load in an AP shell, and... Bruh, what the heck did I just witness there? How did that TVP not die from that? That's what I'd like to know. Okay, well, the uh, Conway aims in. We get a shell of ourselves, 426. Pretty good stuff. And uh, let's aim it on the TV4 again. There you go, another nice shot. He's got three health left. He's also on reload because he just fired, so not too big of a deal for me. Get a nice shell into his upper plate. Just like that, we are up to 4,000 damage. Pretty good stuff. I mean, we're getting out bleeds. We're helping our team. I really like this tank. I mean... The armor is definitely pretty mid. We saw the tortoise just buttering right through my armor with really little effort. But you don't need armor to get the job done in most situations. And um, we did fine. I just was a little disappointed the tortoise was able to hit us and then we bounced his hatch like two times with heat. I guess that's just how life is when you're, uh, when you're aiming it on a tortoise. That vehicle is incredibly hard to deal with. I'm not sure why our standard is uh, trying to fight that. I would expect our Conway and probably EBR to make their way into the base cap. However, the tank that was in the base appears to be dead. I am going to make my way towards mid. Interesting. I mean, the Udez has to be somewhere around here. There he is. Okay, well, we do get hit by the Udez, but at least we hit him back, which is pretty good. All right, let's uh, re... Oh, okay. Well, the Stritzvon was in the back corner. Not much I could have done to predict that. I really did not think the Stritzvon was going to be there. But hey, we did 4,300 damage, which isn't bad at all. And uh, we should come out with a victory, so I can't get mad. And there you go. Our team does end up winning this battle. So pretty good stuff overall. The Centurion Action 10 armor definitely a bit on the Sussler side. It's a large tank. It's got a lot of weak spots, and it's pretty easy to take out when caught in the open. But as you saw, the gun is very nice, accurate, and even without running V-stabs felt incredibly solid, which is just really, really nice in general. So let's take a look. We got a second class, which is fine. And uh, 4,300 top on the team for damage. Not too bad at all, if I do say so myself. We even made credits as we barely even shot too many heat shells. I did want to see not only where our shots went on that tortoise hatch, but uh, where the tortoise was penning us. I'm expecting it to be, like, on our roof, but 
Ah, apparently we didn't even hit his hatch. I mean, we were aimed on it, but it went a little bit low, it looks like. And uh, I don't think we fired any other shells on the tortoise that bounced. So I guess it was just that one, but still a little bit cringe. The other thing I wanted to see was where that tortoise penned us. And oh, wow, that's an interesting one there. Um, and it looks like he was just able to go right through the uh, roof of our tank, which was a little bit surprising, but I guess if you're looking down on the, yeah, I guess just because he was looking down on us, he's able to pen, uh, about a 50-50 chance right in this area, so not, not the biggest deal ever, but we would have been able to probably get out a little bit more if those shells had not penned us, but... A win's a win, and a solid chunk of damage at that. Let's do one more game, and let's see if the Centurion Action 10 can keep it up. I actually had a really enjoyable first experience, though, in the tank. Uh, the armor felt solid. The, the gun felt really nice. The pen is super nice as well, 330 mils of heat. I always find it a little weird and stupid that mediums have more pen than heavies in World of Tanks. You know, in Blitz, heavies have more pen than mediums, which in my opinion makes sense because heavies have bigger guns. They have larger barrels. They have more shell velocity. Well, not more shell velocity, but they pack a harder punch. And usually, if your shell has more weight to it, it should also have more pen. I mean, I know people are going to say, well, uh, you know, the shell velocity, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. But still, I feel like if you're using a E100 with a 152 millimeter heat shell, uh, it should deal, or a 15 centimeter is what I should say, 15 centimeter. It should have a little bit more pen than like a 430U, but you know. That's just kind of my look at it. Now this game, we are going to support our CS-63, but we don't have too much support. The enemy team has a lot of mediums. They have five. So I'm going to be very cautious here. Hopefully that EBR... No, the EBR did not detect us. Okay. Let's keep on crossing. That is a lot of tanks over there, though, and we have very little support. So this is going to be a bit of a Sussler game. We are going to get uh, fully wide over here. I've actually, like, almost never worked the medium flank, so I'm interested to see how this ends up going for us. But we do obviously have a lot of, uh, ooh, let's just name it on the TVP. There you go. We have a lot of DPM. We've got a lot of pen with our premium shells, so we should be fine for the most part. Oh, okay. But we are already getting spammed by heat from the enemy Centurion Action 10, so this is probably going to be my life for the uh, majority of this game. Wow, what was that? 0.29 dispersion. What? Okay, game. Um, that was pretty awful, if you ask me. All right, well, the Centurion, he overpokes. Okay. Well, uh, our gun is not loving us right now. Let's aim it on the scent again. There you go. Finally a penning shell. We are able to back up and bait the shot from the uh, Centurion in the process, which is obviously pretty nice. Okay. Mm. No. That was never going to hit. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. CS gets a nice shell into the enemy TVP. We're going to roll over here. Maybe be able to hit that Progetto. Or not. Uh, our shell did not even get close to the enemy Progetto. A little bit sad. There you go. We're going to go back to loading AP at this point. Because I think that's probably a smarter decision. Let's see. Prog gets shot. Ah, man, our gun is not liking us too much right now. It's not like, like, sure, my shots aren't amazing right now, but it's not that. It's the fact that the shots I'm shooting aren't even going remotely close to where I want them to be, if that makes sense. Ah, but that hits. Okay. Well, whatever. We penned it, so I can't get too mad. Um, let's reload again. Let's load uh, in an EP shell. Let's see if that Sheridan tries the poke. Nope. Okay. Hmm. I'm not, uh... Not loving the gun as much in this situation. But there you go. Nice shell into the Sheridan again. We're up to 2,000 damage now, which is pretty good. We have bled a little bit of health, but uh, it's nothing huge. And if that Sheridan pokes again, I'm hoping we can just get the clear. We'll see. Come on. Poke it, you little stinker. Progetto's dead. And, ooh. Ooh. Come on. Come on. You're so close. Come on, just give me that. Give me that little. Aww. Oh. Alright, well, I will move up. I will support the CS because I don't see a reason not to. Of course. Enemy artillery shoots us down a little bit. Not much I can really do about that, though. Um, we're going to make our way over here. Let's see if we can possibly get a shell into the TVP. No, that one was never going to hit. Alright, well, let's reload again. And... There you go. Nice 374 into the enemy. And we reload again. TVP's obviously getting blood out big time here. Sheridan's dead. 
I don't know what happened to their Centurion Action 10, but he flanked all the way out. I'm not even sure why he would have left that spot. Well, let's see. We got the 4005, we got the grill. I didn't even see that 4005 until now because I was focused on the grill, but let's let it in an HE. Come on, girl, back up. That's all I gotta do. Just back up a little bit. Come on. There you go. 460 damage HE into the grill. However, uh, I'm gonna back up before that 4005 kills us, so let's do that now. Oh, wait, 4005 spotted. All right, well, if we drive up here, we might just be able to see the 4005. He's very close to being able to be seen. Um, we have the grill all the way in the back. There you go, 524 HE. This is where, obviously, the Hesh on this tank feels very, very dangerous. Look at that, another 438. We literally have an insane level of DPM right now on our tank, and we are, uh, we are making sure that the grill does not enjoy our company all too much. Let's reload again, and... There you go. That did not pen, though. We are not getting the best accuracy from our tank right now. Let's try it again. There you go. The grill does hit us, though. I'll give him credit. Absolutely nukes our tank in the process. Got the 405. Ah. Let's drive up a little bit more. This should be a pretty good position, even on the uh, 405. Or not. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, we did fine. We did 4,200 damage, which is more than enough, and we supported our team. We got out bleeds, but man, our gun did not really like us this game. And like, it wasn't the on move. You know, somebody might say, oh, you should be running V-stabs instead of vents. Like, I don't know. The gun was a little bit troll, I'm not gonna lie. We had a lot of easy shots. We were fully aimed in on that girl, 0.29 dispersion, and we missed him quite a bit. Uh, two shots went low, but again, I can't get too mad. We did 4,200 damage. We got a victory. And uh, we, we did our job. The gun on this tank is very solid. That's what I'll say. And I traded a bit of accuracy. I'm willing to admit that. I traded a bit of accuracy to run the improved targeting. But it worked out. We did top on the team once again. We did a pretty solid uh, result. So I am happy that I have improved targeting on the vehicle. I could have ran, you know, V-stabs, which probably would have made us hit a lot more that game. Or the innovative aiming, which would have given us 10% better uh, base dispersion. But 0.28 is plenty good. The aiming time is fantastic. I don't think we need to make the gun any better than it is. I'd rather have 4K DPM. I'd rather have the ability to withstand more shots and have better track repairs. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Centurion Action 10. I think it's quite a, a fun vehicle, quite underrated. We averaged over 4K today, so I can't get too mad. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.